بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Before I begin, I'd like to just say I'm so delighted to see all of you in person. It's been almost two years since we were able to have this kind of gathering. So it's, it's a pleasure to see you all and to have such a big group in one place. So I'd like to begin by really thanking uh, the hard uh, working men and women of uh, our medical community, Ministry of Health, and everybody in the security forces, the Ministry of Interior, who have brought us up to this point that we have really overcome this pandemic in such a great way in Qatar, and hopefully this is going to be over for good. I think most of you by now know why we're gathered here uh, to uh, really share a great moment in the history of uh, Qatar Petroleum. Uh, I would like to maybe reflect on the past before I, I talk about what we're, we are about to do going forward. So if you go back 83 years ago or so, we discovered our first oil field, Dukhran oil field in Qatar. And then subsequently in 1971, about 50 years ago, we discovered the North Field, uh, which really spearheaded the gas revolution uh, in, in Qatar, if you will. And uh, it took us to celebrating in, uh, around 10 years ago or so, being the leader in the LNG business uh, with 77 million tons per annum and beca becoming the number one supplier of LNG in the world. In uh, 2014, uh, we reassessed what Qatar Petroleum looks like and how we, were, we had an ambition for it to look like in the future. And uh, we started by reforming QP itself. We restructured Qatar Petroleum, made it uh, much leaner and more focused. We also looked outside Qatar Petroleum to the companies that are spearheading the chemicals business and our other uh, businesses, such as LNG. And uh, we reformed some of these companies, merged some of the chemical businesses, brought in uh, all the marketing, Muntajat and Tasweeq into Qatar Petroleum to have a focus on marketing and a center of excellence to be able to develop that business in a greater way and also develop the people and the competencies in the right way. In addition to that, we looked at our oil business and decided to take over operations with forming a national oil company, North Oil, to spearhead the operations of our largest oil field, the Shaheen oil field. In addition to that, we decided uh, to take uh, ourselves operations of Ad Sharqi oil field, the Rayan oil field, which were operated by others due to the uh, excellent competencies we have within QP to do it ourselves. Uh, in addition to that, the largest, uh, I think, merger, if you will, of uh, operating companies ever attempted in the world of uh, LNG and gas business, merging Qatar Gaz and Ras Gaz at the time to make the largest uh, gas business uh, company in the world uh, or the largest LNG company in the world, Qatar Gaz. Uh, in 2017, we also put together the new strategy of QP going forward, looking uh, really in a 10-year uh, and beyond horizon for QP, and we established the strategy with uh, main pillars, uh, one of which is, is uh, the international business that we want to be in, and uh, that's part of why we actually brought in QP International into QP, and as you have seen, that uh, we actually uh, took the international business to different levels uh, than uh, in the past. So we're internationally present in many, many areas due to that strategy. But two pillars of the strategy that I want to focus on today is, is really the environmental and energy efficiency uh, pillar, and the other one is, is the LNG pillar. So uh, we wanted to make sure we're much more efficient in our energy use and, and uh, looking at solar and looking at renewable energy as part of our strategy. And the other pillar was to make sure that the LNG leadership position that we already have uh, is, is maintained and grows. What we announced uh, then is, is that we were going to grow our LNG business going from 77 million tons to 126 million tons by 2027. The first phase of that is Northfield expansion 
East, which will start in 2025. North East, North Field Expansion South will start in 2027. Coupled with that, looking at the other pillar, which is the environmental pillar, is we made sure that everything we've designed is the most efficient from a power usage point of view, and we also included the other pillar, which is using solar in uh, the design to power some of our LNG expansions, so using solar coupled with the LNG expansion. In addition to that, we've used the best machinery and equipment that's available uh, technically to make sure that the emissions that we have are the lowest possible, technically possible solutions that you could uh, put in any gas plant around the world. In addition to that, and most importantly maybe, is, is the design of CO2 capture and sequestration from inception. I mean, from the beginning of the design, we had CO2 uh, capture and sequestration included, and uh, that will take us from uh, currently what we're doing in CO2 sequestration uh, and capture to going up to around 9 million tons per annum of CO2 sequestration. And just to, say, to talk about what we have existing today, we started with some of our partners and Imperial College also in the UK uh, around 12 years ago. And I was personally responsible for that uh, area of the business is, is to research the CO2 sequestration part and, and how we could do it in our fields in Qatar and uh, how would the fields react. So we have been on research really with, with top uh, colleges around the world and, and some of our partners to make sure that we can do it the right way. So currently we are the largest uh, CO2 sequestration project that actually is, is actually sequestering today two and a half million tons per annum of CO2. So we have been pioneering in that and will only grow in that area. Now if we move forward to looking at what's going on around us around the world and everybody's talking about the energy transition and what's going to happen next. And you have two spectrums of, of you know, I think announcements by different uh, countries to their ambition to net zero and so on. But I think with all uh, the announcements we've seen from different countries, some have an ambition to reach uh, um, net zero without a plan, and some have a very defined plan that actually uh, is, is put in place. But in all, uh, in both spectrums, if you will, or both ends of that uh, discussion, uh, all of them have gas as part of the solution. And this is why we think that, that uh, gas is definitely part of the transition going forward. It's going to be needed for at least a few decades going forward. And we think uh, that we are uh, in, a, in a very uh, opportune position to make sure that we can serve our customers while doing it very responsibly and making sure that we are in the forefront of any technology and, and uh, requirement also for all our customers uh, around the world in the LNG uh, sphere. Now, coupled with, with all that, we, we, we put a team together from my leadership team uh, in QP uh, to look at with that strategy, do we need to change our uh, name? And uh, the conclusion was yes, we, need, we needed to uh, change our name to reflect really what's, uh, you know, uh, what's happening around us and what we think uh, we should reflect externally uh, we are doing as, as uh, Qatar Petroleum. Uh, and if, you, if I can give you just historically what happened is it used to be Qatar uh, Petroleum Company or QPC in the past. It moved to QGPC when I joined uh, Qatar Petroleum just a few years ago. And then uh, 20 years ago, uh, it changed in 2001 to Qatar Petroleum. So exactly 20 years ago, it was Qatar Petroleum, and now we're changing it to Qatar Energy. I think with that, we can maybe put the new name and logo. So this is, this is the new uh, logo for uh, Qatar Energy. I think to, to conclude, I would like to uh, really uh, thank all my leadership team in QP who are sitting in the front row here. They have been instrumental in this whole journey of transformation in QP. 
I would like to thank uh, all the leaders of, of the companies, our subsidiaries, and whether it's Qatar Gaz or all the chemical companies, the leadership uh, of these uh, companies. And I would like to thank all the staff and all the employees of the oil and gas industry for their excellent dedication and uh, commitment, especially during the, the difficult times that we have been uh, through. So a big thank you to everybody, really, for their support. And I'm sure uh, the great company that Qatar Energy is will only be greater going forward. So I really, really thank you all uh, for that. In addition to that, I would like to thank all our partners. I think we have ExxonMobil, Shell, ConocoPhillips, uh, uh, Total uh, Energies, and everybody that has contributed that's even not in the room. But I'd like to really thank our uh, joint venture partners without whom we, have no, we would not have reached where we are today. So I really thank everybody. I would like to also thank, since internationally some are watching us, and I'd like to really thank all our customers around the world for their uh, you know, trust in us and, and for believing in what we can deliver. And, and I assure you that we'll, we'll only keep up the excellent reliability that we've always maintained in our, all our products. To conclude, I think most importantly, I would like to thank His Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, the Emir of the State of Qatar, for his unwavering support to us in the energy industry. He's always been a great guide for me personally and for all of us. And he's always been very supportive to us, and that's one of the main reasons why we have been successful. Thank you very much, and I appreciate you being here.